Good morning and welcome to St. Teresa of Avila. Gathered in the presence of the Lord, we come together to celebrate the sacred sacrament of First Holy Communion. Today we witness the unfolding of a journey as our young ones take their first steps towards the table of the Lord. In the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup, we are reminded of the boundless love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the gift of the Holy Eucharist, we are united as one body, one family, in the grace and mercy of God. As we partake in this sacred feast, let us open our hearts to receive the abundant blessings poured out upon us. Let us be nourished by the presence of Christ, filling us with his strength and his peace. May this celebration deepen our faith, ignite our love for one another, and inspire us to go forth into the world, carrying the light of Christ within us. With hearts overflowing with gratitude, let us lift, up, lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving for the wondrous gift of the Holy Eucharist. Please join us in singing our opening song, Canticle of the Sun, number 576 in the Gather Songbook, number 576. joyful day as we continue to celebrate this season of Easter and for our second graders this great and joyous celebration of their first communion a great gift for them and their families for our entire community and a reminder of the gift of the blessed sacrament our Lord Jesus Christ body blood soul and divinity in our life and in our hearts and so my brothers and sisters let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord 
Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold, hold to in what we do, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. From the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord.
St. John, Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves God is, loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him in this love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. And, and send his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. As the 
Father has loved me, so I have loved you. These are the words of our Lord in today's Gospel. And in a special way, it is so fitting that we celebrate First Communion for our second graders and we come to celebrate this Mass. Because in a very real sense, those words are exactly what happened today. When we receive the Lord, who gives Himself to us in the miraculous way that He does in our Blessed Sacrament in the Eucharist. The Father has loved the Son. In school, in theology, becoming a priest, we learn that the Father's love for the Son is total and complete. The Father has given everything to the Son. And so when our Lord says that He loves us as the Father has loved Him, He is saying that there is no part of Him that does not love us and that has not been given to us out of that love. And this goes further as we read. We who are recipients of this love, you all in a special way who are recipients of this love in First Holy Communion today, are then called to love in the same way. To give of what we receive, to give ourselves completely out of love to others. It is a very high call, for sure. All of us in this church know how difficult it can be to live and to love with the same, the, the, with the same fire and passion that our Lord has loved us. But that is what we are called to. And in fact, that is what we are made for. You know, recently I heard about um, a year ago, the Surgeon General of the United States, kind of the top doctor of the United States, he sent out a letter talking about one of the real problems that we are facing. And it was interesting that in these last few years, we have been flooded with many problems that we have seen in the medical field, for sure. But the one that he wrote this 86-page or so document about, this big work, was about loneliness. And he put forward the idea that Americans are suffering from an epidemic of loneliness. And there is something about our modern culture that has kind of isolated us. But everything throughout this paper, and it has many different causes, and we can even link many different things, but the reality stands that we are made for communion. We are made for unity and communion with each other. And our Lord God, He knows that. From the very first time, that we pulled away as a human race from God's love, we started this track of trying to live on our own, of isolating ourselves. And yet our Lord knows, God knows, the Father knows, that that's not what we are made for. But we are made to be together, to love one another, to build each other up. And in a, such a powerful way, He gives us Himself in Holy Communion to do just that. This is no doubt a very special day. All of our second graders look very sharp and ready. Hopefully excited. Hopefully not too nervous. You guys will do great. It's a very exciting day for you, but it's an exciting day for our entire parish community and the church overall. Because the communion that we receive, yes, the Lord enters into us and we receive Him in a special, profound way. A closeness that is unmatched in any other place. And as we receive Him, we are united with Him and we are united together in a powerful, powerful way. Not too long ago, <clears throat> I was driving down the interstate. I was heading home, so I was going north and there's a number of billboards kind of before you get to Norwood. And there were three billboards that were just right in a row, like all could be seen at the same time. And they really struck me. The first billboard was an advertisement for the Cincinnati Reds. The second billboard was an advertisement for plastic surgery. And the third billboard was an advertisement for divine mercy. 
It had a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ up there, and it said something along the lines of, No peace. Come to no peace. And I thought, how fitting that is, because there are so many things in our culture that kind of vie for our attention and really our deepest wants. And in a sense, right there was all three. You know, we have kind of the idea of entertainment and pleasure with the Reds. Not that there's anything in particular with the Reds, except for maybe how they've played the last couple days. There's nothing wrong with that. But when that becomes our focus in life, just seeking kind of that entertainment and pleasure, we know that we're always going to want something more. That second thing, kind of the idea of pumping ourselves up, right? Ultimately, when we rely upon ourselves, unfortunately, we kind of then only have ourselves. And again, that's not the way we are made. That's not the way that we find happiness and fulfillment in this life. But then it's so interesting, juxtaposed to that, is the idea of mercy and love that our Lord Jesus Christ gives us. And in a way, in a very particular way, it's interesting because both of those things kind of call us to give ourselves to something else. But it is in our Lord Jesus Christ, it is in the love that the Father, our God, has for us that we realize quite the opposite. That it is first and foremost His love that enters into our life. That He has given Himself to us. In a special way, when you receive your first Holy Communion, when all of us receive Holy Communion, we recognize that it is not our merits that have brought us there, but we receive that gift of love. We receive that gift of love out of His desire for us. It is then how we are going to live that is our answer. We say those words when we hear the body of Christ, and you have all practiced this, we say amen. It's a word that we say in our prayers all the time, but it is a very powerful prayer and proclamation in itself. It literally means, so it is. But what it actually kind of further means is that, yes, I believe and I put my life on it. We are saying that we are receiving our Lord Jesus Christ, His body, blood, soul, and divinity, and we respond, yes, I believe that, and my whole life will be in response to that. What a great way to live, because we are saying yes to receiving the love that our Lord wishes to give us. We are saying yes to being united as a community in faith, to living not for those other things, or not for ourselves, but for living for each other, being built up as the body of Christ who we have, called, we have been called to become. So for everyone here, whether this is the first time that you are blessed to receive our Lord Jesus Christ, or if this is the hundred thousand thousandth time that you have received our Lord, recognize this great gift that it is out of love that our Lord has given Himself to us. We say, Amen. We say, yes, it is true, and I stake my life upon it. renewal of baptismal promises and the sprinkling of holy water, I invite our children to respond. Dear boys and girls, on the day of your baptism, you received the gift of faith, and God our Father called you to live in His love. May you now renew the promises that others made for you when you received that great sacrament of baptism. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. With trust and confidence and the love and care of our Heavenly Father, we lift up our prayers and needs. Is Lord in our prayer. For Pope Francis and the whole church, God will guide and protect them. We pray to the Lord. Lord in our prayer. For our parents and our siblings, our relatives and our friends, our godparents and our grandparents, in gratitude for the support that they give us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For our parish community gathered here today, may each of us be grateful for the gift of the Eucharist as we experience this encounter with our Lord Jesus in the Holy Communion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the, for all the priests, catechists, teachers, and all who helped us in preparation for our first confession and Holy Communion, may God bless them and bestow upon them the gifts they need for happiness and salvation. And let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the children who today for the first time received the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion, may they love him with all their heart and forever live faithfully, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you especially on this day for the gift of the Blessed Sacrament in our life. Open our hearts to receive you worthily and to respond to your call of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. For those intentions we keep in the silence of our heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Carmen Petrillo, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now be seated for our offertory procession. Number 938, we come to your feast. Number 938.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by, their, by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
distribution of Holy Communion today, we will invite forward our first communicants to come forward and receive for the first time. Then, after our Eucharistic ministers all get in place, we invite everyone to come forward in the normal fashion. If you are um, not Catholic or not receiving today, we invite you to either remain in your pew or to come forward for a blessing by crossing your arms. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Number 923, table song. Number 923.
Number 922, without seeing you. Number 
us pray. Mighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank everyone for being here, and especially I want to thank the students from St. Joseph out of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati who are in town for musical uh, conference and band. Um, I also especially want to thank our family and friends of all of our first communicants uh, for being here and their support. I want to thank everyone who made this liturgy possible, from our, our teachers and sacramental preparation uh, to planning and organizing this day um, and our choir. And lastly, in a special way, I want to thank all of our first communicants uh, for being here and doing so well today. And congratulations, a heartfelt congratulations on behalf of all of us on your reception of your first Holy Communion, our Lord Jesus Christ. And as a parish community, let us show them a sign of our continued love and support. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth now, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God. Number 593, I want to walk as a child of the light. Number 593.